listen to anybody covering his face and mouth. You know, because it will look like uh, there's some an attempt to kidnap um, these guys. But now, you know, everybody is, uh, has become a, a robber. You know, by choice. And it's nice to see all of you. Really nice. I feel comfortable talking to a pharmacist, actually. I became one about 39 years ago. And uh, and I was celebrated actually because there were only five schools of pharmacy then. Now we have about 22. But it shouldn't take anything from uh, the quality of pharmacy. How many people uh, did I teach? One, two, three, four, four. How many people are from Bombay State University? How many people are from Niger Delta University? Those are upcoming schools. I don't know why they are not in Lagos. Some of them are in Lagos. I brought that one out so that the organizers will know that there are still a lot of people outside of the net that you have to rein in, right? I appreciate this group. If we add something like this, pharmacy would have been better by now. So I give it to you. You know, younger people are more vibrant. Some of us are not in a mindset and belief. Not by choice. Uh, if you wake up in the morning and you can't see anybody in your front, you have two options. And then you go back to sleep. <laughs> Maybe you are sleepwalking. Okay? Or you calculate the risk of being on the road alone. I'm happy you are taking the option of calculating the risk. Those are things that Charlie and I did not pay for. Those are things, you know, passion that is driving. Everybody knows that among the passionate policies in Nigeria, and possibly in you know, all the continents, uh, my students call me by my birth name. They call me Bassman. Okay? The story is for another day. <laughs> <laughs> because Shamina did not pay for that, right? <laughs> so, when we had some crisis in the university around 1992, some people said the problem of the university is that they teach what they are not paid to teach. Do you understand? As a university person, uh, you do technical teaching, maybe uh, 70%. The thing that is enduring will be that 30% that you are not paid to teach. Okay? Now, let's see what shall in our for us. Now, the, the principle, the principle actually, you know, is to. Mm, the principle of pain management. Maybe if we look back, your good teachers of pharmacology in your various schools will have taught you that when you are talking of pain, pain is not a disease, it's a signal of something coming up. Show me that person who does not feel pain. And that is somebody that God does not love. Because if God loves you, it will give you a signal that something is coming. So some of the times, the headache that you feel when you have tension, that's, you know, muscular pain when you have stressed yourself physically. 
All of them are signaling to take the next step. It doesn't happen in nature most of the times. It doesn't happen. So we are favored by God to have something announcing, you know, an imminent danger. By the time you look at the definition of pain, you will agree with me that it must or it shouldn't have been any other way, except, you know, signaling. Now, uh, the, the topic is now a three-pronged multimodal attack for the control of pain. When you say multimodal, that is something working via three modes for the same purpose. And it also assumes that you have three options. And you are now putting the three options at work together. Uh, how many of us are Arsenal fans? No Arsenal fans, because there are not many. <laughs> Or because you don't like football. <laughs> but you know, when, when you talk of Arsenal, the English meaning of Arsenal is Amore. That is uh, where you store your weapons. That's the meaning of Arsenal. So the Arsenals are the weapons, okay, that you store in Amore. So when you now take all your three work tools or work ends together, that thing is in trouble. That is the demand, you know, because we need to communicate. We need to get it, even though you are promising by the good grace of God. And why we don't advertise is that there are no better promises. You are as good a pharmacist as I am. The other difference is that I'm older than all of you. In fact, when you combine about three ages, I feel older. <laughs> but more importantly, is what some of us have seen. You know, and we have started seeing it before you were born. And we kept seeing it even until you even ran, you know, head to head to us. You know, we are still seeing, and that's why that what qualifies me for standing you and you sitting to learn. Are you getting that one? So let's look at, let's interrogate this and let's see. You know, now when you look at this Victoria, I want us to look at this Victoria. If you can remember all this file. That is telling you inflammation, what inflammation is all about. These are the symptoms of inflammation, as we are saying. When there is inflammation, even if you don't know how to put it down, if you are ever challenged for any reason, or you are maybe in the hospital, or in your workplace, or even in the community where you live, and you need to entertain this, you know that if there is it, it's likely to be an inflammatory process. It, I'm not saying fever. You know, it has a spot that has some sort of it. You place your hand on a particular and it's other than the surrounding place. Be sure that a process of inflammation is ongoing. Redness, you know, you can have it translated into something, you know, that looks like a blister, something that is, you know, red in terms of color. Okay? And you see swelling. You know, when you have inflammation most of the times, you have, when you see somebody who has ankle arthritis, for instance, you will see swelling of that, you know, uh, Ankle, and you also have pain, you know. So, most of the times, you see the things we are combining to arrive at the definition. It may be possible to have 
any of this without having inflammation. But when you start having some of this in combination, you know that you know we are talking of inflammation and loss of function. You know, if somebody has inflammation, maybe of uh, the elbow or of, of this place, the, the, the best thing that can happen to that person is to put it in the sling and hang it. There's already loss of that function. You cannot use that hand to scratch anything. Are you getting my point? So the loss of function does not mean when the person is amputated. Do you understand? No, it may be temporary. And that is instructive, okay? Now the combination of this, if you are dressed in nothing, those of you that may have your grandfather alive and also be lucky that the grandfather went to school, you know, and learned Latin. These are Latin words. Tumor, you know, means swelling. Rubo means is redness, color from the from color, and pain, dolor. Okay. Then a uh, lesser function, that means not a function. They are all, you know, but uh, we're not encouraging you, nobody will ever ask you unless you ask yourself by going for interview. But we have all satisfied you every day, all you need to do is. Just with your license, you are now an autopilot. <laughs> However, even when you do MCCD, nobody pays MCCD. Once you pay this year, okay, so let's go. Now, uh, that is standard definition according to the International Association for the Study of Pain, okay? A person's sensory and emotional experience. Okay, uh, my students know that I don't reach to them because somebody said you can all read and write, right? Uh -huh. So all these things, what we have engaged or interrogated this by telling us the benefits of pain. It's not all sad news. That is uh, sensory, emotional and uh, disturbing, nauseous, okay? Uh, when there's no pain, there's no gain. No test, no testimony, okay? So, all these, even as they are, they are describing the process, all right? And you can just know the definition because I'm putting it to you, and there are standard things. Now, when you talk of nociceptors, when there's pain, there's a release of some endogenous chemicals. Incidentally, the body is equipped such that when there's pain, there's a release, you know, of uh, what we call the body's own morphine. That those are the endorphins, okay? that rises to the occasion. You actually feel pain when those things are overwhelmed, when it's beyond them, okay? Otherwise, it may be transient and it may just go away without you noticing. But uh, that's what we need to, when, before you tell you damage can occur, that will be overwhelming of the process that is in place. That is natural. What this means is that for all those pain, uh, redness, and everything to occur, the, uh, the gate man has been bypassed. Okay? And therefore, now let's move on. And see what are the elements of pain. Now, when we are talking of elements of pain, we, we have two pains. 
Uh, I don't know if some of my students were lucky to have been. When we're talking of pain, I'm a standard person to test your knowledge of pharmacology and application of pharmacology to medical plants. If you have, you know, two scenarios, or even one scenario, there's a loving husband, mark my words, I don't wish words. There's a loving husband to a loving wife who is in the labor world, having pain, pain of labor. Are you getting my point? And now somebody says, who between the two has more pain? And what is the resolution of that pain? And I will put it, don't go biblical <laughs> and don't tell me uh, what you don't know because everything is in pharmacology then. Usually, what I'm interested in are the receptors that govern the two scenarios. That's all I'm interested in. If you say, if uh, somebody said something, no, 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 just tell me the receptors. And now the resolution is one receptor is physical, you can quickly block it. And that's the pain of the labor woman. You can use petitine, you can use, you know, any of the opioid that are just like, and it's resolved. But this man outside, the only thing that can cure his pain is what? Not drug. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. B. You have a bouncing baby boy. And you see that pain translated into joy of dancing. Whatever the steps that they can recollect. Are you are you with me? Now, pharmacologically is saying that there are things that are physical, either peripheral or then there are things that are psychological. If you attempt to use drugs, the first two weeks of application of drugs will not move anything. Look at all the psychotropic drugs. They don't become effective until after 10 days. What happens? The woman will be in labor for 10 days. Do you understand? So that is, and even if you see somebody who has psychiatric problem, they can be cancelled at the onset. You see the problem resolving. Maybe they even need something that's not even drug. By the time you want to use uh, antidepressants, antidepressants, they take about 10 days to start to decide whether they want to work or not. Do you understand? So we have to be careful of things like this as pharmacists. So that we don't rush into using drugs where non pharmacological approach can work. Okay? Now, types of pain. They are classified according to the duration. You know, that's why we talk of acute or chronic. Um, less than six months and the very outside can, can be assumed to be acute. But when we are talking of acute, we have to be very careful. You know, there can be acute pain arising from somebody, you know, smashing you, and it may resolve on its own, even without any treatment. Uh, so, that's, these are the characteristics of um, each of the classes. Then, when you say type of uh, pain, as you get cops, it can be caused by anything. We've got to be careful about that. So that my cause is not related to anything. In fact, some of the things that have not happened to us, they cause pain, like COVID-19. Are you getting my point? So do we now think that we are going to have COVID-19? You know, and now put it, so there are a lot of things that can cause pain. You know, those are areas where students can hide. And 
put whatever they think can fly. Okay, next thing is either not decided or error. Now, one thing that I have put and that I want some of us to, you know, to engage, uh, when we're talking of pain, that's not how you will avoid the anaglutinic acid pathway or cascade. When we're talking of pain in most conditions, okay? Because it summarizes the process of inflammation as well as the treatment, if it's acute or management, if it's chronic. I'm sure you are not playing with me. That when you're talking of treatment, you use treatment for things that are acute, and you use management for things that are chronic. Don't make the mistake that I want to go and treat my hypertensive patient. You can only manage such persons, okay? You have asthma, you have diabetes, you have all those things. And arthritis, you know, has migrated into the chronic status, okay? Rather than uh, ordinary inflammation, right? Now, these are the subtypes. When you say something is not certain, just like we have said, that is, that is a, a sort of release of endogenous substance, arresting or combating or limiting tissue damage, as it were. Okay? Now, uh, these are the differences. Uh, when we were in school, we would say, uh, draw a table, uh, similarities and differences. Uh, are you getting my point? Those are some of the... Now, I want us to look back. Look at this duration, okay? Remember that we are not talking of acute and chronic. We are talking of nociceptive and neuropathic pain. So that we don't say we are talking of six months the other time. This is, you know. Now look at the causes, stimulation of nociceptors. Okay. If somebody has surgery or strike or fracture as a result of uh, you know an accident or whatever. You know, they, they are different from um, having neuropathic pain. When you are talking of ne neuropathic pain, you are talking of so those pains, anyway, we will strike in the picture more, you know, Adam, when we know that some drugs that are deployed for inflammation treatment for some neuropathic pain and not ordinarily drugs that can classify as anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay? We are talking of gabapentin, we are talking of gabapentin, we are talking of some even uh, monoidine oxidase inhibitors. Some of them can be deployed at neuropathic pain, you know, resolution. Now, management, and that is where that's where we are going. When we're talking of management, if it is no society, you can apply the multimodal analgesic or you know, multiple approach in terms of uh, mechanism of action. Okay, you actually can. Now, you can also for no society, you can do the uh, opioid therapies because in actual fact, uh, when you, when you, uh, anti nociception Most of the times in the past, people will even be referring to opioid, you know, um, deployments. Okay? But air, yeah, not just like I said, the anti-depressant, anti, anti can be used, you know, as this, uh, for our good, because I'm sure the coordinator will receive this and pass it on to us. This is like another book that you have, okay? 
Now, this is telling us what we know. Whatever the pain is, it has, it is pain is connected to the central nervous system. I know the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the, you know, uh, and the spinal cord. Okay? Uh, some of the times when you have peripheral nociception, it, it stops at the spinal cord. It doesn't necessarily get to the brain. Okay? But one thing that I want us to flash back. Uh, we, we all know the production of adrenaline, no adrenaline in the body. You know that it's only adrenaline production that waits for when the body comes. Yes. But the process of manufacturing and destruction of no adrenaline goes on, you know, for life. Are you with me? Now, I want you to engage. Rationally, when you look at the arachidonic acid cascade, you will discover that some of the inflammation may not warn you. So there has to be some things happening in the body per second per second, such that if that problem comes, you know, if for instance, you know, God forbid, a lion comes in now. You will, see, you will see people, you will know that Ben Johnson was a child play. The way Batman will take off. Are you getting my point? Because the, the adrenaline that will be pushed out, are already, you know, installed, waiting for activations. And it's just the last, you know, demethylation of the no adrenaline, last process that occurs. So because no adrenaline is constantly being, you know, produced, it doesn't, and no adrenaline is not stopped. It just this is just made, works, destroyed, and it starts again like a tipper, just uh, fetching sand and uh, putting it down. That's one aspect. Now look at arachidonic acid cascade. When you look at this, you will notice that it is not all about inflammation that prostaglandin is synthesized. Are you getting my point? Because the prostaglandin ordinarily uh, a bad boy will also have its usefulness. Are you getting my point? Yes. It is and when there is a problem with its function because now you want to stop its synthesis. How about this good work? Are you getting my point? If they are top of the landing, the lining of the GI, you know, will be in trouble because it's responsible for the bicarbonate, you know, secretion that protects the GI system. That is uh, one. Okay. That is that is one function. And that function is continuous. And um, we are traded to protagonist synthesis, right? It's not only, it's not, it's not only that. When you now block protagonist synthesis, you will discover that for some people, particularly who have asthma, there's, there's constriction because the process cyclins that are supposed, you know, to have their own function are also blocked. Are you with me? It's not limited to that. I can assure you that if somebody keeps using anti inflammatory drugs, the person who is normotensive may become hypertensive for two reasons. 
The first reason is water retention as a result of sodium retention. The second reason is because on the smooth muzzle, on the uh, surface, on the membrane of the smooth muzzles are some uh, substances, some receptors. Uh, you have factor four, you have factor seven, you have uh, and uh, the pressure factor, among other things, and all these are negatively effect, are affected when you block prostaglandin synthesis because prostaglandin, you know, is the reason. The production of prostaglandin makes the, the blood vessels to be active in checkmating the van der Waal force. Okay, by which the blood moves through the blood vessel. You know, you still remember Van der Waal force that strikes, you know, across, you know, the vessels as the blood is uh, moved. So when there are no prostaglandin synthesis, these factors that I mentioned that are produced as a, along with you know, you have the cocaine, you have motorcycling, you know, all of them are affected. And when you block their synthesis, you are inadvertently asking the blood to flow at its own risk without that uh, natural checking. Okay? So, well, the uh, impact of pain on human body. Is a summary of what we have been saying. Reduce mobility. Okay. Limited social function. Tell me that person that has pain of arthritis that will go for one day. It will be at home. They will be sending word. Say, please, tell them I'm not terribly good. Are you with me? Anxiety. What happens? Uh, last last year, Mr. So and so just had a headache and he died. You know, it's my own going to be like that. You know, those are friends of us. They stop sleep. Very, very important. And you also now, I'm sure as pharmacists, we know the connection between insomnia and hypertension. Very, very clear. When the cortisol that is produced to work during the day starts being tipped off from about 11, 11 30 p.m. when all honest people are expected to be sleeping. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so if you don't sleep, you're on your own. Because that cortisol is responsible for daylight activity. That's one. Two. It's also responsible for the energy and the, because it's, it has pressure effect. You know, when it's released continuously, it affects the heart, affects the blood vessels, it makes life go round, produces energy from breakdown of uh, some of the nutrients and things that we are eating. So, when sleep is disturbed, the cortisol that should have been metabolized and broken down and tipped off, they are still at work. And when they are at work, you cannot sleep because they need to be disengaged so that you can sleep. When sleep is disturbed, be sure that that's how pain can keep. It's not pain itself that will kill. It's whatever it brings. Because if you don't sleep well, there'll be diabetes. There'll be, you know, exaggerated arthritis. There will be hypertension. That's why, you know, most adults, uh, people above 60, if they are lucky, some people above 50. When they wake up at two o'clock, the smart ones among them will start praying. 
when you are praying, you sleep up. Okay? If you don't sleep, that's why you see them having multiple problems. The same person that has a crisis will be the one that has hypertension. We also come with diabetes. One person. Do you understand? So whatever happens, you know, just make sure you sleep. However, when you sleep, all other problems will be solved. I think so. You know? Okay, let's entertain some common pain conditions, okay? And we say we are talking of arthritis again. Just import some of those things that we talk about inflammation because arthritis is an inflammatory condition, okay? But we have different types. The two very common ones are osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, okay? The only other difference is that they also come with immunological components. When immune you know, system is compromised, then there are problems. Whereas you can uh, address the osteoarthritis, you know, easily. The rheumatoid arthritis you have to bring a, uh, a sort of immune uh, poster or something to think out with the immunity. Now look very well at the you know, at the uh, pictorial, the normal joints, okay? When you have uh, bursa, because in fit, I mean, much more in front, you will see a condition called bursitis, okay? When you have bursa, you have a sort of a pushing between the tendon, the bone, and the skin, okay? It, it's sort of like a pushing foam, like a shock absorber, okay? It's like a shock absorber of a sort, okay? And uh, you have synovial fluid, this green one, uh, covered by another membrane. All this must, as a rule, be intact, okay? If they are inflamed, we run into some challenges. Okay. Now in osteoarthritis, we know that the synovial fluid is exhausted, making friction, you know, between you know the the, the, the bones, you know, to be to be the challenge. And once the bones, you know, crush uh, between the two surfaces, it is pain, you know, that we results. Um, most times, it's not easy to rebuild this because it's uh, as a result of aging, among other things. You know, if you have been an active athlete, you have to watch out, you know, because there is something they call overuse atrophy. Okay? When you overuse the joints, you know, it's a uh, you find such challenges, okay? Sorry, I need to. Hello, who is it? Hello? It's the best for Then I need to start from it. You know, now let us look at the two different. When you look at the rheumatoid arthritis that we said. It's more of an immune system. You will see that air, it is the bone that's being eroded. Air, the bones are intact. It is synovial fluid that is the challenge. When the synovial fluid there is intact, then the bones are, you know, given, they are given way. Okay? So, these are part of the conditions. You know, a lot of people know about pain and, uh, you know, in other words, we can have problem with the bone, we can have problem with the synovial fluid, we can have problem, you know, with the, either the tendon or the muscle. Are you all with me? 
So, uh, what can cause it? Age. Okay. Age is one. It is one condition. So, I don't know. Most of us that have our grandparents in the villages, you see, the athlete suffer from some of this because they are used to a routine of taking immune boosters without knowing when you eat anything naturally it's not likely that you suffer you know some of this okay we are coasting home okay tendinitis and bursitis just like we have said that you know this is a crosser okay and this is a tendon so inflammation of tendon tendinitis inflammation of the bursa bursitis you know what i think uh, we should after this uh, it should be this is also what we uh talked about that if you if you are in the sports you got to be careful you know there can be a sudden problem a kid's problem like a terrible bad tackle you know you are you are heading for goal and somebody said it shouldn't be i give you what we call twin stop what do you mean <laughs> they give you twin stop that's how you can survive that one you are going to fall down it can be worse than that you know something they, they give and uh, it becomes a concern, you know, for uh, treatment as it is. Yes, uh, another good component is this menorrhea, you know, which happens mostly in sexually active, you know, families. Okay, you either can have, when I say sexually active or mature, maybe mature is the, the word, okay? It presents in many formats. But when the such people start giving back, I, I think most times it subsides. Okay? It's mostly in uh, young female. By the way, you know, I am the only male in my family. So I live in the guest system. Okay? <laughs> But now that them have gone. So I'm living only in my wife's house. <laughs> okay, so that's this menorrhea, which is an inflammation also. Okay, and this is a result by taking any anti, any of the good anti inflammatory, because it's actually an inflammation of the salt. Okay, headache. Yes, that's not how you talk of pain. Then you can, you will not talk of uh, headache. And I want, I'm inviting us to look at these four scenarios. You know, the first two, tension, third one, migraine, you know, and the other one, cause uh, headache. Okay. What is uh, of note is to know that there is something they call primary headache. It doesn't have to be a disorder. Uh, they give you money for Okada and you choose to work. Okay? Definitely something we give. It, it, it doesn't mean that you are sick. But you have to be restored. Otherwise, the pain you know, will be dead. You know? Then, secondary headache. That's what is caused by the parts of that line, you know, from them. Okay. Pain management. You know? Now, there are two principles. Okay? Assessment of intensity and severity, then selection of appropriate, you know, approach. And that is where the topic of today is in multimodal approach. Now. Uh, that approach will target different receptors and neurotransmitters in the same. 
So when we're talking of the centers and neurotransmitters, okay, um, in recent times, it dwells more on the centers. You know, you can say 60, 40. The centers are more important than the neurotransmitters at any point. You know, whatever the case you are, are treating, okay? Because some of the neurotransmitters may be cutting across the same receptors, okay? Now, pain assessment, yes, um, it is good. It's called uh, one Baker facial grimace scale. But let me tell you the problem with this. Unless somebody was cooperative, I can feel pain and hide it. That's why the definition of pain, you know, looks at it as a subjective, you know, presentation. Even, the, I mean, we watch, some of us watch football. Somebody who is wriggling on the floor, just because they have contact, near the award penalty, it will be the one wanting to take that penalty. Don't you know that this, uh, that there is no forensic evidence. Do you understand? So revisit that and say, look, with the level of your pain, how long it is you who want to take the penalty shot? Do you understand? But we don't, we are all dishonest. <laughs> at least at that level. Okay? You see somebody does a little thought, you will say, no, oh, I mean, that is a lie. You just to escape whatever is current. Are you getting it? So it's a, if you want to get away with anything, plead pain. Because nobody can say you are not feeling it. It's left between, between you and God. Okay? So, look, people can manipulate any of this unless they don't know what you want to use it for. Do you understand? But then it still remains the tool that we can use, okay? Pain management, non-pharmacology and pharmacology, pharmacological approach, okay? Uh, when you're talking of non-pharmacology, you have even things like, uh, like talk, like I said. Then look, the type of tool, look on, we manage it. The type of tool, as we manage it. Now, you will also manage it. Do you understand? Are you getting my point? Yeah. Especially when you look at psychological things. You know, those are things that you can. Even when it is mechanical, you can apply, you know, as lock. Okay? All you want to do is to promote circulation. Promote circulation so that there is no judgment or disturbance of flow. Once everything is flowing, you know, how can you talk that somebody uh, wants to say that to you on the traffic when traffic is moving? That will be no safe, Abby. Everybody is moving, but once there is photo, then somebody can do something. Like that. So when uh, last one or whatever, come to arrest the person who is selling Galam, that the people go again. I think I'm making sense. Okay? Now, I want us to, to interrogate this very well. Because this is a WHO document. Okay? Because they don't, they don't want to give a wrong signal. But this ladder is actually a five-step ladder, like a prison. So at the bottom of the prison, I think like paracetamol and non cellular and inflammatory drugs. Okay? Step two, a weak opioid, you know, for mild to moderate pain, right? Then step three, strong. There are some pains that will not, you know, be resolved. That is three steps. That is WHO. For the benefit of us as pharmacists, 
There are still some other steps. The next one is penicillamine. Penicillamine, you know, which is an immune modulator, can also be brought in if it's uh, the pain we know result, particularly in some cases of arthritis. If penicillamine will not do it, you can bring in gold. Are you surprised? You shouldn't. Gold. G O L D A U. Okay? Because in all immune uh, problems or challenges, the orochrome or the receptors for gold are usually present such that um, they don't work by way of uh, prostaglandin synthesis or anything. They work through that orochrome, you know, or orochrome receptors, you know. And lastly, if those will not work, surgery. Maybe because we are uh, pharmacists, that's why people need to emphasize surgery. But the surgery is the effects on top of the prison, okay? So apart from this, we have identified, you know, because all this, uh, all this morphine, they have, um, they have opioids, okay? We still have opportunity to use the steroids, okay? Apart from the non-steroidal, you have opportunity to use the steroids. You also have opportunity to use penicillamine, to use gold and to use surgery at the last time. Okay. Now, pharmacological treatment is just a synthesis of what we have been talking about. That, in fact, is summarized in the previous uh, slide that we, that we saw. Um, both Prasamol. Aspirin, all of them, they are initial therapy, as we have seen. But as we see in future, in the next few slides, we see that the multimodal approach utilizes prasamol that works centrally, and uh, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug that work both centrally and peripherally. Okay, that is, you know, the importance or the meaning of multimodal. That's just working in different directions, okay? Now, this also from uh, what we have said before, but the one that we did not talk about are actually the local analgesics, like in lidocaine, okay? Uh, we know that if it comes to it, you can actually desensitize a local area so that pain is not felt. But most of the times, if we need uh, somebody who is good and smart, okay, I'm lucky. Okay? Then you have antidepressants. You can be brought in, you know, at times in the control of pain. Uh, you know, some of these antidepressants, some of them make the sympathetic uh, neurotransmitters available. Because when you look at some classes of antidepressants, like in front of any non-serious individuals, all it does is to prevent the breakdown of the monoamines. What are the monoamines? Histamine, dopamine, no adrenaline, PAGHT, okay? And all of them are involved in depression, okay? So when you see clozatine, it's not the only one that can be used for this purpose. But when you employ salt for this purpose, you have to monitor. Do you understand? Because the person is not really the, uh, suffering from depression as it were. We are using that one as adjunct, okay, to the resolution of the pain, okay? 
Then antiepileptic medicine, pregabalin, uh, gabapentin, you know, and the rest. Okay. What has happened? Hmm? Is it the something happened though? Huh? Because I know it's not the end. It's not really the end of the slide. Okay, now. Yes. Now, when you look at this, there is something to, to really say about the array for our benefits, you know, and benefits of uh, either we forgot or your teacher did not follow on time. <laughs> so forgot to tell you some of the things about some of this. Aspirin was the first anti-inflammatory drug that was. Uh, in 1997, we celebrated 100 years of aspirin. Okay? So that guy is very old now. But one news about all of them is that the parade and the planetary power to different extents. There have been a lot of improvement over time. Even propane, for instance, is very, very low on uh, GI irritation. That's why a lot of people use it. Okay? Sulindac. How many people have seen Sulindac in, in practice? Uh, how many people have not had a bad Sulindac before until today? Uh, thank you, thank you. Sulindac is an anti inflammatory drug. It's the only anti inflammatory drug that does not interact with each individual or diabetes. Okay? So when you have somebody who has anti inflammatory, I mean, who has inflammation, it's either you use cylinder or paracetamol. It's so narrow. You know, however, uh, cylinder is uh, costly. Maybe that's why it's not in our realm. Okay? All others, you know, because they are full, cost one and costly. Now, the okay, preferential cost two and partial cost B, you know. The, the only thing that the parade does not note is the extended outline, you know. Yeah. They have extended outline. The, the one with primary COX-2 inhibition with little action on, most of them, incidentally, Particularly, celecoxin and cardiovascular, you know, after effect. Okay? They have cardiovascular backlash that may make them, you know, in fact, some of them have been withdrawn from, from use, from practice, in some clients. Okay? Now, Prasamol plus senses must be modal approach to pain management. Okay. Now, when we say Prasamol, okay, we know. Ancest, which one? Uh, somebody will come and tell us why it has to be uh, the particular one that was chosen for the formulation. Okay. What is multimodal? You know, uh, we deal regards to people of uh, other faith. The Bible said one we kill, how many? A thousand. Two we kill, look at the proportion. Eh? So even the Bible said, agree to multimodal approach. Because 
when you, I will show you a demo later. Now you will see what quantum one alone can do, and what combination of quantum one with another drug, you know, will do. Okay. So the aim of what modern analgesic technique is to improve analgesia by combining analgesic additives of synergistic effect. You know, what we know is pain. Are you getting that point? Pain. So that pain, if it comes as large or anywhere, it may be needing analgesia or anti-inflammatory. Whichever way it comes from, a multimodal approach will, you know, will do it and arrest it. Okay. Why we need it? That's what we have been saying since morning. I even went out of my way to put the Bible. Did I put it right? No. Eh? Well, in the book of uh, Greek book. When David went to war, well, approaches to now we have agreed how many minutes from uh, it's more than enough. The one we are saying is a multi modern approach may have traditional approach combined with a non traditional. Remember that when we say non-traditional, we have not even, we are not saying uh, the non-traditional, we are talking about the components, which we said about alpha adrenergic agonists, okay, and antidepressants, okay? Well, uh, non-pharmacological, electrical stimulation, behavioral therapy, Counseling, etc. Okay, acupuncture, heat therapy, massage, cold therapy, you know, and touch therapy. Okay. So, mechanism of action, we all know it. If we don't know by now, if it happens centrally, all you are saying is that you are modulating the central effect such that maybe uh, prostaglandin is not encouraged to be synthesized. Are you getting my point? It's as plain as that, okay? There are two ways. It's either you don't feel the pain. It's not that the pain is not there, but you are not feeling it. Or the cause, you know, the pain to be blocked because the instrument or the endogenous substance for doing that and the way they are blocked. Okay. Now we are coming to evidence, evidence based. In all these conditions, either dental pain, musculoskeletal condition, you know, we have, we have evidence that combination of factor more and say, we, we provide. I think in the next one, we are still talking of benefit, okay? The good thing about this combination is when you combine two uh, drugs, you are most likely to use some optimal doses of the two. The immediate benefit of that is you are minimizing the side effects of each. Remember, you have Prasamo 500. If you are using Prasamo, they don't use 1000. But in combination, some of these will be combined with just 500 milligrams of Prasamo. Okay? Well, we thought, we thought all of you this in school. Nobody can. Nobody is new for change. We are not entitled to any, any change from any of your teachers. Okay? Because we know that once you combine caffeine, what caffeine does most of the times, 
It's a tattoo out of the lethargic pain that happens when you have pain. When you have pain, you are not interested in anything. Even if they say, come, come and kill for money, they say, because pain, real pain. <laughs> so, the campaign we post the energy you know, is a natural stimulant, okay? And it will not make the, the pain to be evident, okay? Yes, you all of this, I will read that um, the coordinator approaches the manager and you are given this because one day like that, I'll just call any of you. Meet me at also and present to nurses. Do you understand? And it, it definitely will not be Limeka or don't tell me your name because I still remember it. You know? I still remember it, but now 